Hey, hey, what's going on? <clears throat> it is Friday. So that means that it is free coaching Friday. And I know I'm not Ray, even though I look like him a little bit, maybe look like Ray a little bit. No, probably not. But my name is Kaylee Fisher, and I am so grateful and so excited that I get to be the one to hang out with you today and do free coaching Friday. So um, I'm coming to you live from Mont Bellevue, Texas. I'm about 30 minutes east of Houston, Texas, if you are familiar with the great state um, here. And I am so excited that it's Friday and it's Memorial Day weekend. For those of you that aren't familiar with me, I am a coach for the Inner Circle. I am also a part of the speaking team that Ray has put together with Higdon Group, um, along with so many other amazing women. And I just am so grateful for you being here and trusting me with your questions. So if you're new to Free Coaching Friday, what I'm going to do in a little while is I'm going to open it up to questions and I'm going to answer some of your burning questions. And I'm going to do my best to bring so much value into your Friday. So a little bit about me. I am a 28-year-old mother of one. Um, I am married to my husband, Mason, and I am someone that has gone through rate makers. I'm still a part of rate makers, but I am also a graduate of the 100K Inner Circle Coaching Program. And that's actually how I got to be here with you today. Entering into that program changed my life for the better. And it also opened so many doors for me. And I can't wait to share a little bit about that with you. But before I jump into it, I just want to say hey to Paul and Sandy and TJ. Nina, what's up? Sharice, what's good? Michelle, Karen, Karen, what's going on? Let me know where you guys are um, checking in from. So um, back to my story through 100K Inner Circle. So before I came into 100K, I was a stay-at-home mom with my three-month-old son, and we were struggling financially so that I could do so. Um, my husband was working seven days a week, 14-hour days, and the only time that we ever really talked is when he was questioning me about certain expenses that I had made um, that I needed to make to give our family what we needed, food, groceries, diapers. Um, and I was getting an allowance every week to do that with. But even when I spent money out of that allowance, he would question it. And I remember one day I had saved um, every week from my allowance so that I could go buy decorations because we were living in this really small two bedroom apartment and it was bare. There were no decorations and I wanted to be able to decorate our apartment, make it feel like home. I had been saving my little bit of money from um, my weekly allowance so that I could go do that. So the middle of October, I went to Joanne and I went to Hobby Lobby and I was so excited. I had $300 that I had saved up to spend on um, decorations and I spent it and I was so excited. I was just so glad that he was going to get to see what I did with our little place. And he called me and he said $300 on decorations. Y'all, when I tell you I saw red, phew, I was so mad. I was so upset and I was so defeated. I was so defeated. And from that moment on, I knew that I had to do something to be a positive contributor to our family. And so I found rate makers. And then from them, from there, I found 100K Inner Circle. And since 100K Inner Circle, our life has changed drastically. I love Fridays so much because I get to spend them with my husband. He went from working all the time to working four days a week, eight hour days. We went from living in a really small two bedroom apartment to this really beautiful 3000 square foot dream home of ours. And more importantly, I am so fulfilled because of what I learned in that program, implementing it and becoming a product of that program, I get to be a part of it on the coaching side. And I get to do things like this, where I get to come say, hey, y'all, and answer your questions. So I want you to go ahead and start um, dropping your questions in here. I see Cherise says, same thing here, explaining expenses every other Friday. Girl, I was there. I know that pain. And when I'm telling you, it doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't have to be that way. I, I have my own money now. I never have to explain expenses. And it's so wonderful. I just bought his Father's Day present with my own money. And I'm just, 
I'm so grateful and excited. And I wouldn't be that I wouldn't be here without Ray and the coaching program that he offers. Um, but I'm not the only one that has generated success like that. I do want to talk a little bit about Amy DeCane. I don't know if she's here. I haven't seen her pop up, but Amy is someone that I had the opportunity to coach personally um, through 100K Inner Circle. She joined in August of 2018 in Rank Makers, right? And shortly after that, she started hearing about Inner Circle and she asked about joining, but it wasn't really the right time until Rank Makers Live 2019. So if you were at Rank Makers Live 2019, let me get a whoop, whoop. And if you're excited about Rate Makers 2021, let me get a whoop, whoop. All right. And so um, we mentioned coaching at Rate Makers and she knew it was time. So when she started in Inner Circle, she was very inconsistent. She felt like she was throwing wet spaghetti at a wall. I just poked myself in the eye. And she was working all the time. Hey, Amy, there she is. What's up? She was working all the time, just trying to find something that worked and her team crumbled and she was so lost. And so when she did her first round of inner circle coaching, she went from a negative spaz, her words, not mine, with zero mindset work to a positive person who believed in herself. And she started having her biggest months in network marketing consistently, right? Biggest months consistently, big month after big month after big month after big month. And every and she was earning every trip presented and was capitalizing on that opportunity. Ray, what's up? So um, this just made her more excited for what was to come. And she learned that success started here and belief in herself and through coaching, she was able to establish that. And so she loved coaching so much. She saw so many amazing results. She's in coaching again. She's in her second round of coaching and she is learning to just be present and to slow down, to speed up. And she is dreaming bigger um, than she's ever dreamed before because she has seen more things happen in her business that she had no idea was possible and she's seeing it happen. So that's allowing her to dream bigger. Um, now she is always in the top 10 of her organization for enrollers in volume and is constantly dreaming bigger. Amy said that she earned more in the first five months of 2021 than she did all of 2020. And up until this point, 2020 was her biggest year ever. So I am so grateful for Amy. I am so so excited that I got to work with her. We got uh, Mary Kate in the house. What's up? So I just wanted to share that story. And I see Lyle said he just turned, joined 100K. What's up, Lyle? So excited to see you there. And I would love for you guys to go ahead, drop some burning questions that you have about network marketing, how to grow your business, how to enroll more people. It, anything goes here. Anything goes, right? Um, somebody asked, is this broadcast on Clubhouse? I, I'm not completely sure about that. Um, that's the one question I don't know the answer to. So um, Mary Kate, if you know this, if this is on Clubhouse, can you drop a comment? <clears throat> I have one more story that I want to share with you guys. Um, I had the opportunity to work with Regina Rozelle and she is really incredible. I love Regina. We connected immediately. She has a daughter named Macon and I am from Macon, Georgia. And so we just, we hit it off immediately. That's another great thing about coaching is when you talk to these guys, they know who to pair you with, right? And that's so amazing. Um, Mary Kate said, no clubhouse today. So before 100K Inner Circle, Regina had not had much success with network marketing, maybe a sell here, maybe an enrollment there. Um, and she was trying several different ways to create success, much like Amy, just like throwing things at the wall, seeing what stick was running like a chicken with her head cut off, just trying trying to generate some momentum, so some success. And then 
fall of 2019, she saw the opportunity to get one-on-one -on -one coaching at the Rainmakers Live conference. So before Inner Circle, disorganized, struggling to string a strategy together, not finding the level of success she wanted. Um, and she just came in so coachable, so open to learn. And since coaching, she has found a way to show up consistently. And I don't think people understand the importance of having someone to show you how to create a consistent habit. That's a skill in itself. And so she learned how to create a consistent habit of showing up in her business. She got a bulletproof strategy um, and she is following the Power Hour format. Um, all of my Power Hour folks, um, DMO dominators. Uh, she had her largest sales volume ever in network marketing in February, which um, was a short month for her, right? And then she just topped that last month, right? She brought home the most money ever in her entire career last month. Um, she is having multiple rank advancements in months. She's growing a team for the first time ever. Um, and she qualified for her car bonus. We love car bonuses, right? So, um, and she's on her way to earning her incentive trip. So since joining Inner Circle, just, um, it seems like a few short months ago, she's not only having business success, but she has more structure in her life. Her family and her marriage and her relationships are improving, right? Because she has more gratitude. She knows how to be consistent. She's working on her mindset and she's improving other areas of her life through having a coach. And she just said, I feel like a nice, a nicer person. That's what she said about coaching. So um, if you think that coaching may be something that would benefit you. Now, if you're someone that you're barely keeping the lights on, this probably isn't for you, right? Um, if you're someone that's not super committed to growing your business to the next level, this probably isn't for you, but we love you here. We are so happy to have you here and we're so grateful for you. But if you're someone that resonates with one of these stories that I shared today, you know that you have a hunger and you have a drive to improve your standing in your business, to string together a strategy, to put together some consistency, to improve your mindset and to just shift into a leader and to shift into more success, fill out the application. There's no obligation. You're not locked into any type of commitment from filling out the application. All that that's going to do is kind of let us know that you're raising your hand and you may be someone that's open to generating more success than you've ever experienced in your business before. And so if that, if you fit into that category, all you have to do is go to higdengroup.com forward slash coaching, higdengroup.com forward slash coaching. All right. So I saw, um, I saw one question that said how to attract more people. Right. Somebody had the question, how do I attract more people? And the simple answer to this is provide more value. Right. And I don't want you to get hung up on the word value. My overthinkers out there, overthinkers anonymous, raise your hand. Right. My overthinkers out there are going to hear the word value and they're going to say, oh, no, how do I do that? What is valuable? What is valuable? Well, value is anything that educates, inspires, entertains. Um, up, uh, it inspires and uplifts another person. And so providing value is something that's really simple. I'm sorry, I got to fix this mascara. Well, it's here to stay. So um, now that I've drawn attention to it, when you're providing value, this is something that can be done in a really simple way. You can Google things, you can use Pinterest, <laughs> you can Invest in your personal development by watching YouTube videos, by getting coaching, by watching Free Coaching Friday, by watching a video in Rate Makers. And then you can ILTE that to your audience. You can learn it and then you can teach your biggest takeaway and then edify the trainer that you heard it from. Because the more value that you provide, the more people are going to want to follow you. 
And I don't know how deep I'm allowed to um, go into this, but I'll ask for forgiveness later. So when it comes to providing value, attracting more leads that are going to be a good fit for what you have to offer, it may benefit you to get clear on who it is that you want to work with, right? Because, and again, if you're not someone that's consistently providing value, just get into a place where you're providing value, where you're ITEL, ILTE information that you're learning. Um, you know, maybe you are regurgitating facts from Google. Maybe you're sharing what you're learning through personal development. Maybe you're entertaining people with some funny stuff your kids said. Maybe you're inspiring people with some quotes that you found that are really resonating with you and why they're resonating with you. Those are great ways to start providing value. Um, another great way to learn how to provide value is follow people on social media that are providing value. Ray is amazing at this. He has like those one, two liners that just pack a huge punch and it's so amazing. But if you're wanting to get more specific about wanting to attract people to you that are going to be a fit for you and what you have to offer is think about who it is that you want to work with. Because the more clear on the type of person you are that you would love to work with, the better your content is going to be geared towards that person. Also, the easier it's going to be to attract that person. And we're not going to get into the mindset behind that. But when you think about the person that you are looking to attract into your business, who are they? What kind of content do they consume? What are they interested in? What's valuable to them? Right. So for me specifically, I know that the person that I want to work with is women over 25 with some type of financial responsibility, already involved in personal development, already involved in fitness, and somewhat shares the sense of humor that I have. Those are things that are important to me. Those are the people that I want to work with. So all of my content is personal development and fitness. I share some stuff about my family and I might post a joke every now and then. But I know that I'm wanting to work with people that fit that mold of women over 25, financial responsibility, already involved in fitness, already involved in personal development, shares some type of sense of humor that I share. And so knowing that that is the person that I want to work with, every time that I'm providing value, I'm speaking to her, right? I'm talking to her. And so my content is geared to be attractive to her. I want her to stop her scroll, right? And so that's where um, I come up with the content. Now, if you're not consistently providing content and value, devising a strategy may be something that's good for you. Getting on, sitting down on Sundays and deciding, hey, I'm going to post an inspirational quote Monday. Tuesday, I'm going to post a curiosity post. Wednesday, I'm going to do a live video about getting better sleep. Thursday, I'm going to share something about eating fruits and veggies. Friday, I'm going to post another inspirational quote. Saturday, I'm going to do another um, curiosity post. And Sunday, I'm going to post something about my family. Because if you plan it out, you're putting yourself in a better position to be more consistent and to carry out that strategy that you have to attract that specific person. I hope that that was helpful. Let me know if that was helpful. Drop me a hoot hoot. We did woot woot already, so we have to change it up. All right. How to attract the right leads who are ready to sign up immediately. Bridget, great question. So when it comes to attracting right leads that are ready to sign up immediately, first you have to be able to believe that you can you are someone that can attract leads that are ready to sign up immediately. Secondly, is to let go of your need or let go of the need to only attract people that are ready to sign up immediately, right? It's been proven that people need multiple exposures to what you have to offer. Follow up is key, right? Follow up is key. And the best thing that you can do is consistently provide value and get these people watching you and sharing stories about people in your company that have had success with products or with the opportunity, because one day you may speak to what that person needs, right? You may speak to a situation that they're in. 
also understand that you can't control people and you can't decide for them. So I would say prospecting is going to be huge, right? Because that's active marketing. That's something that you can control when you're saying things like attract people that are ready to sign up. That's passive marketing. Passive marketing means you're putting marketing out there, hoping that it generates a response from people, right? And you can't control that. <clears throat> But what you can control is your prospecting and how much you prospect and where you're finding the people that you're prospecting and your follow up. Those are things that you can control. That's your active marketing. As far as passive marketing goes, you just can't control people that are ready to sign up right now. Right. You can't control the decisions that people make. Um, but the thing that's going to help you is talk to more people. Right. And consistently share stories of people that are finding success in your business. And I'm not talking people that are, you know, rags to riches in six months. I'm talking about, you know, the bus driver that's able to take his little girl to the ball game on Memorial Day. I'm talking about the teacher that didn't have any problem filling her classroom with supplies because of her side business. You know, I'm talking about, um, the girl who lost five pounds in one month and is feeling more confident, right? Those are the stories that you want to share, the relatable ones, the ones that are believable. Again, how to attract the right people to join your tribe. Um, and anytime it comes to attracting, getting clear on what you want is going to be very important. What do you want? Who Who is the right person for your tribe? What is your tribe? Get clear on those things, right? What type of person would be a perfect fit for your tribe? What kind of culture are you trying to cultivate? What type of people do you want contributing to that culture? Because if you don't know the answer to those questions and you aren't clear on the culture that you're trying to provide in the tribe that you are um, creating, if you're not clear on those things, then it's going to be really hard to attract the right person because you're not going to know who the right person is. Now, I'm not saying that you should take time and devise all of this out instead of prospecting. No, prospect, follow up, provide value. That should be the basis of everything that you're doing every single day, right? Then if you have five or 10 minutes, sit down and get clear on what is your tribe? What type of people make it up? Who would contribute to it? Who's your perfect business partner? All right. Ooh, I just scrolled down really fast. Question. How do you feel manifestation affects your success? Did you ask this just for me? I love this question. So I am huge on manifestation. Um, I did Power Mind, which is included in the 100K Inner Circle coaching program, and it completely changed my life. Um, through that, I read... Um, attractor factor. And from there, I just have gone all in with manifestation and manifestation affects your success because you are always manifesting. You are manifesting all the time. And the reason that you're manifesting all the time is because law of attraction is always at work. It's like law of gravity, right? It doesn't matter how many times I sit here and drop this phone. It's always going to fall because law of of gravity is always at work. The same applies with law of attraction. Law of attraction is always at work. And what law of attraction responds to is your energy and the thoughts that you carry and the focus that you have, right? What Where focus goes, energy flows. And what you're focusing on and what you're thinking about and the beliefs that you hold determine where you're vibrating um, on this frequency scale, are you high? Are you medium? Are you low? Right. And that frequency of vibration is what's determining what you're manifesting in your life. It's what's determining what you're pulling in. So if you're someone that's really looking to achieve a high level of success, but your energy is low because all you think about is I can't or I don't have time or my husband's a prick or my kids are driving me crazy or my leader's crappy or my team doesn't help me or nobody, nobody wants to buy. And you can't have success because your thoughts and your beliefs are down here. This is a low vibrational energy. And so you can only manifest things that contribute or that are a match for that low vibrational energy. Now say maybe you're medium energy, right? 
you're, in, you know, you have some good thoughts, you're excited, you know that you're consistent, you enjoy the place that you are in your company and with your team, but maybe you have a fear of being seen by a lot of people. Or maybe you have a fear of success, or maybe you have a fear of failure. Or maybe somebody told you when you were six years old, money doesn't grow on trees. Or maybe when you were 12 years old, you got rejected um, by the boy you thought was really cute. And now you're so fearful of being rejected. And so, you know, you're a little bit excited. You're a little bit happy. And so that kind of brings you to this medium level energy. But all of that fear is going to hold you here. Right. Because it's going to keep you from doing the things that you need to do. And with all of that fear, you can't elevate your energy to up here where it's real high. So you're medium, right? And so at this medium level energy, you'll be able to manifest things that match that. So maybe a few sales here and there, maybe a rank advancement here and there, maybe a partner here and there, um, you know, maybe a shared post here and there. But when you really work on yourself and you really break down those limitations and you really break down those fears and you are, and again, I'm, the coaching is amazing at this. They provide, you know, people that will help you with this, us and information that will help you with this. But when you break all of that crap down, all of the fear, all of the limitations, all of the holding back, all of the negativity, when you break that down and you start believing in yourself and you start having levels of confidence you've never experienced, when you start understanding things and you're feeling, you know, just so excited and you're not fearful, you're effing going for it. I almost said the F word. You're just effing going for it. And you are so happy and grateful and elated and joyful. You're up here. And when you're up here, you manifest things that match this energy. And you know what matches this energy? Success. Success matches this energy, right? And that's what we want. And I'll give you one tangible thing that you can do to manifest more success and to put you at this energy. So if you hear the saying, um, success breeds success, right? You've heard that before. Success breeds success. Raise your hand, right? What I like to tell people is success doesn't breed success. The energy of success breeds success because you have to put yourself and find your way to put yourself in a successful energy first before you can experience in your experience it in your physical reality, right? And so when what you can do is every day at the end of the day, take time and write down five things that you were successful at in your day. Did you prospect? Were you consistent? <laughs> and I always say this, did you fold clothes out of the dryer? <laughs> That's a success for me. Five things that you were successful for in your day. And the reason that you this is so important is because if you know at the end of the day that you're going to have to note five things, five things that you were successful with in your day, guess what you're going to be thinking about all day? Guess what you're going to be focusing on throughout the day? Guess, guess where your thoughts are going to go? You're going to be looking for ways that you are successful. And when you are looking for ways that you are successful, you find ways that you are successful. And when you notice your success, you carry a higher energy. And when you carry a higher energy, you manifest more success. I love this stuff. This stuff fires me up. So I, it just, it all contributes. Manifestation contributes to all levels of your success right? Because if you're holding this higher energy, you can attract higher vibrational people, higher, you know, more abundance, more success. I hope that that was helpful. Stop being scared. Um, yep. There we go. Nicole asked the same question as Ray. Are y'all just, are y'all just trying to make my day? I love it. Hey, this is Mega from India. I am new to online marketing, learning from rank makers. Woo woo. Please let me know if it's appropriate to send message in their messenger if they are open to see what I do, even if he or she is not on my friends list, as in they are some random people whose profile I find impressive and I want to approach that person. Is it okay? Yes, it is okay. I love this question. And the reason that I love this question is because there is this 
belief that you have to know people to ask them. You have to have a warm market. When I got involved in network marketing, I had nobody that was going to buy anything from me. Number one, I didn't have many friends and the friends I did have were broke, right? They, they just weren't in a position to buy things from me. Another thing is, is I didn't want to hear no. I wasn't mature enough to hear no from the people that I loved. So guess what I did? I did exactly what you're asking about. I strictly asked people that were random and some of their profiles weren't even impressive. (laughs) I was just asking anybody and everybody. And I really encourage you to get out there and do that cold market prospecting, because even if they say no, you're going to continue to follow up with them, maybe build a little bit of that reverse report. And from that, your network grows and you're plugging people into this funnel and you're following up with them periodically. And through that, you you carry people from cold to warm, warm to hot, hot to enrolled. And I heard Jess say this on um, the, the 12 week success program that was around when I went through coaching and she was talking about her prospecting and how she took people from cold to warm, warm to hot, hot to enrolled. And she even talked, and I know this isn't what you asked, but she even talked about there was one year in her business, she decided I am only prospecting big fish. And so not only was she prospecting people she didn't know, she was prospecting people that were like CEOs and successful and she didn't know them, but she postured up and she did it anyways. And it was really amazing for her. So yeah, I totally suggest that you do that. It keeps scrolling all the way to the bottom. Just have to push through the fear. Things would be so much easier with coaching. You got this. Manifest it. What you think about, you bring it. (laughs) Nicole said yes. Does the value that we provide have to necessarily do with our business? Laura, I love this question. Um, No. You can transition from anything to anything. And if you've never done a 14-day challenge... There's not one going on now, but there will be eventually, I hope again. (laughs) Um, If you've never had a chance to do a 14-day challenge, do it. One of the most incredible things I learned during my first 14-day challenge, 14-day challenger, OG, okay, the first one, um, was how to transition from anything to anything, anything to anything. So, um. People involved in fitness would benefit from some of the stuff that I offer, but, you know, it's not specific to them, right? And this is the same with whatever you provide. So let's say that you are selling hair care. I'm just going to use hair care. It just, I don't know. Anyways, say you're selling hair care, okay? But the people that you're wanting to speak to are people that are involved in fitness, right? And so your content is geared towards fitness, but aren't people that are involved in fitness going to wash their hair or aren't people that are involved in fitness going to want to have nice hair or aren't people that are involved in fitness going to have skin that needs to take care of and aren't people that are involved in fitness going to wear to wear jewelry right and so just because you're providing value on a specific thing doesn't mean that it doesn't translate to what you have to offer product or opportunity wise right So the value that you provide is more just you getting in front of people and having them watch you consistently, right? So think about the people that you're following. And Ray is a great example. So he provides network marketing coaching, but he is also always dropping little nuggets, right? He's always dropping like mindset nuggets and and things, personal development nuggets. And even though it's network marketing training with mindset involved, like he provides value that way. Another thing that he does is he talks about his family, right? He's not selling us his family, right? But he talks about it. And we love that. We, we love Sabrina. We love Grammys. We love Jess, right? We love to see that from him, but he's not selling us his family. He's providing us with network marketing coaching. And so you can transition from anything to anything because even though you're providing value to a very specific person, they're still going to have needs that you can meet or know someone that has needs that you can meet. I hope that that was a helpful answer. But um, as far as curiosity posts, those should definitely apply to your specific opportunity and product. Just to, to say... 
that. I'm going to go back and make sure. Higdengroup.com forward slash coaching. That's right, Judy. Yeah, yeah. For me, Cherie says, for me, it's implementing. I've learned and learned. I've learned and learned. So much. I have to take a sip of my drink. I'm so sorry. Forgive me. And I'm so ready to take action, but where first? What first? What second? LinkedIn, Facebook, Clubhouse, TikTok. I feel so scared. I got to stop the start and stop stuff. This is a really good question because almost everybody that I come in contact with in coaching is struggling with this same exact thing. They have so many things that they want to do and they there are so many platforms out there right now. And there's so much information about that out there about this is how you prospect. This is how you curiosity post. This is how you manifest this, this app, that app. You know, there's a lot of information out there. And where you start with is I would say prospecting. That's where you start, because unless you have massive amounts of influence, the way that you're going to build your business is by asking people if they're open to taking a look. Also, if you can get out there and prospect, you can do anything, right? If you can send a message to a complete stranger and say, hey, you know, I saw you're in Pennsylvania. I'm looking to expand. Not sure if what I offer is a fit for you or not, but I'm just curious. Would you be open to taking a look at what it is that I do to earn extra money from home? If not, no big deal, right? If you can do that, you can follow up. You can make post, you can do whatever, right? Eat the frog, get into action first and pick one platform. Are you going to do Facebook? Are you going to do Instagram? Are you going to do LinkedIn? Pick one platform because if you can get consistent on one platform, then you can move to another one, right? The, the goal here is to put some blinders on and to get consistent in one place first and then carry those skills over to a different platform and then expand your skills to a different platform. But if you're trying to do all these different platforms at once, it is going to get muddled. It's going to get lost. It's going to get confusing. It's going to become um, maybe maybe it may become overwhelming. But if you can establish a consistent DMO somewhere first, right? One platform first, you can move that anywhere and make adjustments and be flexible and take it to any other platform. So I would say start with prospecting two people a day. If you've never prospected before, prospect two people a day. And guess what? Next week, take it to three or four and then take it to five and then add in your follow-up, right? Add in your follow-up, prospect five, follow up three to five, prospect five, follow up three to five, right? Um, and then once you get that consistent habit going and you have yourself in the habit of showing up for your business every day, start focusing on your marketing, get the value out there, right? Not saying that you should prospect and follow up and not post, but make those your priority, right? Make those your non-negotiables, right? I'm ready to get into action. I am tired of being fearful. I'm going to tackle this. Make those non-negotiables happen. OK, and if you're not filling out the tracker, do it, because I promise there's some kind of psychology behind it. You're not going to let yourself put goose eggs in that tracker more than maybe three weeks. You're just not going to let yourself. Right. That tracker is for you. There's something about that tracker that changes people's business. Fill it out. Right. It's this it's this level of consistent like accountability that you have with that tracker. OK. Awesome. Man, I feel like I've answered all of these questions. Question, what if you're doing all that you can doing being all real and, <laughs> and still get crickets? Stop focusing on the crickets. If you're doing all that you can do, if you're truly doing all that you can, how many, okay, give me some numbers. How many people are you prospecting a day? How many people are you following up with a day? Give me some numbers doing all that you can do. I want numbers. And then I'll come back to this question. Oh, Kimberly, thank you. With the internet being saturated with online marketing, what's the best way to recruit people in your marketing business? Lead with product or opportunity? Don, I don't believe in saturated markets. I think saturated markets is some made up thing that somebody, you know, did something, somebody made it up about saturated markets. Because think about this. Even if they're in, 
there's not a saturated market of online marketers. To be honest, we're, we're like a very small percentage of people online, right? So let's just let that go. And I'm going to be tough here. I hope that you'll take my toughness. There's no such thing as saturated market in my mind, right? Especially when it comes to network marketing, because there's only one you. There's only one you that can lead the way that you're going to lead. There's only one you that's going to say things the way that you're going to say things. There's only one you that's going to help people the way that you help people, right? So we're, we're not saturated with dons, right? Provide value. That's going to set you apart, right? And back to my thing about saturated markets, think about fast food restaurants. Think about nail salons. Think about haircutting places. Think about gas stations. There's one within every quarter mile and they're all providing the same thing. It's all the same gas. It's all the same garbage drive through fast food. It's all acrylic nails and SNS. It's the same clippers that they're using at every single haircutting place, right? Now, some people may be better than others, but they're all providing the same thing, but they're all in business, packed. Anytime you go in there, right? That's how, I mean, there's no saturation and there's no limitation on how many people can be successful. And there's no limitation or cap on how many people can just reach six figures and things like that. So you got to let that go, right? You got to let this whole thing of how, how do I make it in a saturated market? Because if you have this thought of there's a saturated market and I have to work, and work and work and work and set myself apart and be different and attract people only to me, you're never going to do it. You're limiting yourself before you even get out there, right? You see other people winning, clap, <laughs> celebrate. You see other people enrolling people into their business, clap, celebrate. Network marketing is still churning out millionaires, new millionaires, new six-figure earners, new five-figure earners, new couple hundred dollar earners a month. I mean, still churning them out, churning them out, churning them out, churning them out. This market's not saturated. Do the work. Following up with five, I am more with being an affiliate. Refrigerators. Hey, I'm going to start using that. Everybody has one, but they still sell tons of them. I love that. I'm going to start doing that. Have you ever read One Belief Away by Tim Schur and Dr. Vitali? This is the second time reading it and it's helping. I have not read that one. I'll check that out because Dr. Joe Vitali wrote uh, Attractor Factor and that was one of my first books on manifestation ever. Where do we sign up? Higdengroup.com forward slash coaching. Just want to make sure I got that right. Awesome. 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 Okay. I'm going to wrap this up because... <laughs> Marta said, I just bought a refrigerator. I love that. I love that. Um, Value Plus, really enjoying this. I'm having a good time too. Thank you so much. So I'm following up with five to 10 a day. I am being, I'm more with being an affiliate. So even if you are an affiliate, you have something that you're providing, right? So as prospecting and asking people if they're open to taking a look at what you're providing would still be a part of what you're offering, even if you're an affiliate, right? Because at the end of the day, you're an affiliate of a product that you feel works and helps people. So reaching out and seeing who can help people. Also, um, Kaylee, I do personally coach. Yes, I do personally coach. Also, through Higdon Group, um, with, with following up to find five to 10 people a day, I'm, I'm going to ask you this, and this is going to be a hard question. You said that you're doing all that you can do. I'm doing all that I can do, and I'm still getting crickets. Is five to 10 follow-ups a day all that you can do, right? Because you could be doing live videos. You could be posting consistently. You could be leveraging, you know, um, TikTok videos, Instagram reels, one minute influencer just came out. It's really amazing, right? It's five to 10 follow-ups, all that you can do. All right. Think about that. Still, I would say, get out there and ask people if they're open to checking out what you're an affiliate with, get them information, ask people if they need 
need help, share stories about people that have been helped by whatever the product is that you are an affiliate with, right? It's, it's the same concept. The other thing is, is stop telling yourself you're doing all that you can. Because what you're doing, if you're telling yourself, I'm doing everything that I can do and I'm still getting crickets, is you're focusing on the lack of results that you're getting. Turn your focus to your action. If five to 10 is the most that you can do, if that's the absolute best that you can give day to day, you better be standing up. <laughs> yeah, girl, I gave it my all today. I did it today. I gave every single last effort and energy that I had. To, I'm proud of myself. That's what you need to be focusing on because it goes back to the energy of success attracts success. You can't have this focus of I'm doing everything and it's not working and expect to ever attract anybody ever. You may get lucky, right? You may get lucky with that, with that thinking. But the minute that you shift and you start focusing on what you can control, which is your action and celebrating yourself for that, you can control your consistency. You can control, you know, the energy that you bring when you're taking your action. Right. If you can focus on that and celebrate that and be proud of that rather than focusing on something you can't control, which is the result, I swear people are going to start turning. I promise. I promise people are going to start turning the one minute influencer. It's an amazing course. Higdengroup.com forward slash OMI will take you to the page. I think you get four free videos just by going to the page. Um, but it's basically Ray. Uh, I, I believe Michelle Eldridge worked on this as well. She is so amazing. Worked on creating this course so that um, people can learn how to leverage short videos to create new leads and um, sales and things like that. It's really, really great. Awesome. All right, guys. Hey, I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for being here with me today. This was my first time. I was kind of nervous, but we crushed it. We did it. Thank you so much. Hey, don't forget if you're someone that's really looking to increase your level of success in your business and you think working with someone like me or someone not as, you know, crazy as me <laughs> uh, would be a fit for you, Hagen Group dot com forward slash coaching. This application doesn't lock you into any type of commitment. Just get some information. See if this is for you. All right. Thanks so much. I'll see you.